Let me ask you some questions. I have some deep questions. I know that we've already kind of been going deep, but can I ask you some specifics? We need better lighting. That's all I know. Those you do? <laughs> right. Fire what do you have? What do you have? What's your lighting? I got this lamp right here. It's like a little lamp. Oh, it's a regular <laughs> lamp? You have like a one of those ring lights, right? Those are nice. I have a, a, I'm going to show you. <laughs> Turn the light on. I really I don't think about this it much. This is what? This is what I have. My lighting's going to change because I'm moving it around so I can show you. I have a. Oh, wait, uh, yeah. I'm trying. That's nice. I have, Good. It's like, you know, it's probably like a $40 light LED. And yeah, it does that's. A good job. I just don't do you, but you do this all the time. I don't do it. So I don't, I'm not. Right. Yeah, I do it. And I, I had this, I used to bring my. Actually, I'm not sure if I had it last time, but I finally was like, I need to get it when, when this quarantine thing was, you know, I did it for like a month. I'm like, I need to get the right things. But yeah, that you, light, I, I think that light did help you a little, but I feel like, is there a window? Is there, there a window? Yeah, I there's could, a window there. So you could always face that window. And, yeah. And you're getting more light now. That's better. Is it better? Yeah. Hey, this is Kara. You're watching Really Famous and you are about to really get to know Steve Zahn. I know you know him already and you love him. I love him too, but you will love him more after this talk. Trust me. Yeah, I'm definitely much a serious person. I mean, I went, to, you know, we did the Airborne D-Day tour. I look for arrowheads. Right. I'm fascinated with history and culture and, you know, I, you know, I don't, that's why I read. I read, I read, you know, I read nonfiction. I read biographies. I read, I read books about, about small parts of battles, not even the whole battle. That doesn't interest me anymore. I want to hear, I want to hear about the, this micro history right here. What happened right there? Like that fascinates me. I love that. That's almost like how you're talking about traveling and getting to really know a place. Yeah, exactly. It's like, yeah, I know. Yeah, jerk, yeah, yeah. On yeah. that intimate level. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. People. It's about people. It's not about a train or a building. Yeah, there's Big Ben. Great. Okay, let's uh, let's go talk. Let's go walk around. You want to go? In? That's what. To the Windsor? Like, no, not really. I don't really care. Unless there's a story about the people that were involved in it. Right. Unless it's yeah, it's something I'm interested in. But I'd much rather if we were in a group. I'd go like you go. And when you're done in three hours, I'll be right here. I'm gonna have a couple of beers and sit on the on the street and watch people. <laughs> you know, that's with it. I'd rather do that. Much rather do that and get into a conversation with someone. You know, and go on. So a that's tour. interesting. And hate so, tours, man. Just tours what? in general. A tour a in general. Tours. Oh. Tours. A tour. Yeah. No. No can't good. I can't do. It. I hate it. I hate it. However, there are tours that are not tours. So for example, I stayed in Rome once at a little place. It was again, like a little B&B and the woman who ran the B&B, she was so enthusiastic about Rome. She's like, you know, let me take you out for a couple of hours and show you around Rome. So she took me out for like half a day, just her and me. And she yeah, just was like, but, and then went, that is so cool because that's then great. you're really, not only are you learning the real deal and about the people who live there and what the, what they actually do and da, 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 but then you're really bonding with somebody and getting to know somebody on a one-to-one -one level. I love that. Totally. I, I totally agree. That, that, that to me is the it. Right. You know, the first thing I do is I go for a jog or I go for a walk or I, first thing I get to the hotel, I, I did this thing with uh, Matthew Carnahan down in Cuba. It was amazing. And I got, I went to the hotel, I got in my room, it was great, the wind's blowing a bit. And I just went, I walked. I just started going one direction. I got lost. I got Best. so many people come up to me and like, I, you know, I would get harassed with, you know, the, the, the same old street hustles that everywhere. And you just laugh and go, yeah, what do you, you want a beer? I'll buy you a beer. Walk by myself. That's what I want to do. <laughs> I love you, man. But you know, it's like, yes. But that is the best too. And they have a word for that in France too. It's like, uh, la flaneur is the, like somebody who just walks, roams, right. wanders. Cause that's how you discover things. That's, that's the way to go. I am totally with you, which is also why I like conversations like these. Cause you really get to know 
somebody. I know you'd rather be people watching or whatever, I guess, but I really, I'm fascinated getting to know people. They're the, yeah. who's, what's more fascinating than people? Right. And in conversation, you know, I, 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 I love this too. I think it's, it's really interesting, you know? Yeah. I'm sure there are some conversations that don't are good kind of conversations, but yeah, that's what, that's why podcasts are great when they are in that, that kind of, you know, when they're, when they're open and they're free and somebody mm -hmm. can. Exactly. And they're really fascinating. I think. Yeah. And when somebody's interested in that too, like when somebody who's interested in having a conversation like that, it's much better than somebody who's used to, or only prefers to do like a quick, okay, let's go promote a whatever. Yeah. I mean, that's why it's I, a necessity. Yeah, I know. Uh, like that's why when I do like a junket and it's like five minute interviews or two and a half minute interviews or whatever, and you're doing that, that means nothing. It's just, yeah. it's not personal at all. So that's when I just play games and have fun. You know what I mean? Let me ask you some questions. I have some deep questions. I know that we've already kind of been going deep, but can I ask you some specifics? I need better lighting. That's all I know. Oh, you do? <laughs> right. Fire what do you light. have? What do you have? What's your lighting? I got this lamp right here. It's like a little lamp. Oh, it's a regular <laughs> you lamp? You have like a one of those ring lights, right? Those are nice. I have a, I'm going to show you. <laughs> turn the light on. I really Thanks don't so think about this it. This is much. what, this is what I have. My lighting's going to change because I'm moving it around so I can show you. I have a, oh, wait, yeah, yeah. Trying. that's nice. I have, Good. It's like, you know, it's probably like a $40 light LED. And yeah, that's, the, I just don't do you, but you do this all the time. I don't do it. So I don't, I'm not right. Yeah, I do it. And I, I had this, I used to bring my yeah, Actually, I'm not sure if I had it last time, but I finally was like, I need to get it when, when this quarantine thing was, you know, I did it for like a month. I'm like, I need to get the right things. But yeah, that light, I, I think that light did help you a little, but I feel like, is there a window? Is there a window? Yeah, I there's could, a bright window there. So you could always face that window. And, yeah. And you're getting more light now. That's better. Is it better? Yeah. And natural light is always good. You don't get those weird shadows, but you know, you're a filmmaker. But look, you have no light and you're lit up. There you go. I'm very European with the lighting, like in dark. <laughs> but again, right. And see, we do have the, ma the uh, not matching, but coordinated colors, which is always good. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but my, my light does run out after a while, but I finally realized I'm like, I need to get the equipment to do the whole thing, you know? Yeah, of course. So yeah, here we do. are. But I'd rather be in person. Don't get me wrong. I'm about done with the Zoom. You know what I mean? I like Zoom. I love it. I only Zoom for interviews and I love it. It's like I have good days when I'm doing an interview. Yeah. But I really want to be in person again. It's like enough is enough. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, although I have, look, I have coffee with my friends every morning, eight o'clock. Still? Well, Bob called me. Bob's down at the barn. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's all good. You have to go? Um, <laughs> Bob is a great dude. He's an older gentleman. But he'll call me and go like, hey, Steve, just wanted to tell you, I, I'm shutting the door down here. Okay, Bob. <laughs> he calls me for the weirdest stuff. Like, all right, good good, good deal. Um, and, and these older guys, they don't text. He's got to call me. He was like, where's the hammer? It's right there on the, on the bench. Okay. You know, I told yes. him, I said, well, I'm going to text you my, and he was like, what? Like, come on, man. I saw you have, you have an iPhone. Would you believe my dad is really good at texting? He's in his late eighties and he's That's fabulous good. at texting. He, awesome. I mean, he, he uses, he writes long texts, you know, he'll text my kids and you know, like my son, Charlie was like, this is so grandpa, you know, it's like a whole paragraph of a text, you know, mm -hmm. just to say, thanks. Got it. All right. So, so let me get to my deep questions. Do you have any regrets or what are your regrets? Cause I can't really go like, I mean, I, I, I have regrets like like jobs I didn't do where I, you know what I mean? I should have done that. You know, that would have been great. What was I thinking? Like what? Band of brothers. I could have done that. I didn't. And it was right down my alley, you know? I mean, that's my, that's, that's a dream job to me. Now I'm too old to play a paratrooper, you know? Um, stuff like that. Maybe being a little more connected. I regret that a little bit. Being a little more connected, being a little more on top of it, less cynical, 
in my earlier years as an artist because I think I sometimes didn't quite understand where I was when I should have known where I was at the time. And now looking back, I go, oh, that was an opportunity. I didn't, I didn't jump at that. Okay. So like what? I don't know. Like, like, like when you, when you first kind of arrive on the scene and people are like paying attention to you, no one notices you at the, at the grocery store, at the airport really yet, but your peers are starting to, to write you or talk to you or call you and say, Hey, it might be someone like, you know, Sean Penn, or, you know, it's just, you know, and you're like, wow, I, I, I go, oh, that, sh- that was my opportunity maybe to go, hey, let's, let's go to dinner. <laughs> but I, but I never did that. I, I still don't do that because, and I don't know, I think it's a, I've always kind of felt like an outsider, I think. And it makes me nervous, you know, not not outsider in a good way, and and like I'm I'm too naive about it all, so I don't want to. I protect myself with you know, I don't know. I don't know. Right, Sometimes like not I, connected in Hollywood, so to speak. Right, and I should be more maybe, but I regret that a little bit. It's probably yeah. a trade off though, right? Like it's probably everything's yeah. connected to something else, and that's why I can't go like that's a regret. I should have moved to Paris, you know, because, you know, this, I don't have any of those big things like, you know, I should have turned right instead of left. Right. A horrible car accident. And I, you know, couldn't walk and I had to relearn how to walk. That kind of thing is different. I don't, right. I don't, luckily I don't have those. Right. Well, I wonder what would have happened if you had done more of that. What do you think would be different now? I don't know. Maybe nothing. Maybe, maybe I wouldn't, Maybe I, I wouldn't have succeeded in a way that I've kind of sustained a success and sustained a career. Yeah. Maybe my, my naivete is good. Maybe it's, it's kept me fresh. Maybe it's kept me, I don't know. Hey, yeah. one, you know, I don't have a publicist. It's me. I get 100% after taxes <laughs> i pay myself but kind of my whole thing was i just didn't want to i think the less people know about you the better then you can like kind of change in front of them right right you know okay right. so what is one of the lessons you've learned in your personal life not relating to work lessons or like um maybe something that you realize not really lesson but like something maybe almost like a philosophy or a, like a realization about life, about people, about yourself. I don't know. I mean, I have a real, as I get older, a real liberating understanding. It's, it's liberating to understand really how insignificant you are. I can't even say it. We're very, we, we're ridiculous. Like, pretense and the, the, the stuff, the armor, the, the clothes we wear, all the things that it's just, it, it really means nothing. It's just so like meaningless. And I, and I don't mean that in, in a negative way. Like I'm, I'm an optimist. I'm, I'm an optimist. I really am. Like I'm the one that goes like, you know, my wife and I are opposite. We were looking at, you know, houses cause we were talking about smaller houses. I was like, Hey, this place is pretty nice. She's like, I hate that place. I go, well, you know, it's, maybe you can knock out the back and just build another house on it. Yeah, no, you know what I mean? Like I, I, we, have, we come from different places and we always kind of find, you know, uh-huh. oh, okay. But, um, but yeah, my, my view of, and it's liberating. It's like the idea of wisdom. Like you realize you're really not that smart. Right, right, right. It's perspective. Yeah. Yeah. There are certain things I know how to do really well. They're skills. Right. Um, it's funny. That's one of my questions I like to ask too. Are you an optimist or a pessimist? But without question, you're an optimist. Yes. So am yeah. I. No question. I Love rarely it. get really bummed out. I really, it, it, like I don't, I rarely get really mad, like fucking mad. When I do, it's just like an emotional, like 
joke. It's like a circus. Like, <laughs> you know, it's like a real fight where you just like start crying and wrestling. I mean, it's like, it's never, oh, oh, I'm going to duck. They, you know, it's, the fights aren't like that. They're, they're stupid, emotional, dumb. They're dumb. But we're lucky. I think we're really, really lucky yeah, to no, be optimists. I agree. I, you could be, I feel, I would feel, I feel bad for anybody who's not an optimist, even though they're, that's just the way that they live. So I guess I shouldn't feel bad for them. But as an optimist, I guess I feel. Well, especially lucky. during these times. I mean, yeah. you know, it's yeah. like, no, let's learn a dance. Like let's, everything's going to be okay. Yeah. If you just kind of look, that's a lesson I've learned. It's like, as is, I, I just look at the next day, you know, that's good. Like just the next day, maybe the week, you know, I go, oh, when do I have to go to Hawaii on the 9th? Yeah, I got like five days to just hang out. What's your biggest flaw? My biggest flaw is probably like I, I can get really lazy. I get I, I get productive in a weird way. Like I'll, I'll just do this. Like I'll procrastinate. If I have to like work on something, it's like, it's like school. Yeah, learn my lines, but I'd rather do these. Mm, play a game. I get lost in fucking video game. My kid would never even play video games. He'd come in and just go like, you are such a loser. You're playing Call of Duty. That's unbelievable. And I walked by here two hours ago and you were playing Call of Duty. I'm like, I know. And I'm also paid for your college. So shut the fuck up. <laughs> and that's how we talk to each other. <laughs> but honestly, I can, I can fall into weird holes like that. But I enjoy it. <laughs> And I earned it, God damn it. I swore a lot, sorry. Oh, there's, the, there's that optimism again. You're like, but I like it. I don't like that I'm a procrastinator, but I like it. And I'm good at it. <laughs> That's right. What do you like about yourself? One of the, what's one of the greatest things about you from your perspective? I shouldn't have said that. That makes you feel like you're going to be bragging. That's not, wasn't the point. No, what do you feel? Easy going. I think that's a good thing. You got what? Oh, you're easy going? Is that what you said? Easy going. You know, I don't like other people being uncomfortable. So I'll go out of my way to make you feel comfortable. I'll know that if you come to my house, you'll think, oh, you know, and I'll, 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 you know, I'll make it great. So you'll in five minutes go, oh yeah, I feel great. I feel comfortable. You took your pants off. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, man, we have fun. It's cool. Just walk around in your underwear. People do like to be comfortable though. I think that's a, that's a plus. I agree. I think it's important. I want everybody to be comfortable. I want everybody to be in a great place where they can just work and have a good time and have fun. Right. Isn't that one of the mistakes that some uh, directors, let's say, make is that they make everybody all tense and then they're not going to get the best performance out of everybody? Yeah, I don't get it. It doesn't make any sense. To me. Well, that's part of my yeah. MO too. I like it to be relaxed. If you're not relaxed and comfortable, well, what's the point? I do it. So I think I might have asked you this last time, but I'm not sure if I did. Uh, my last question has two parts. The first part is, well, you already answered this actually. The first part and you usually is, who do people think you are? That I'm just like a regular dude, like work on a farm or whatever. I mean, around here, dude, I, I, this is true. I had all the, all that material that came over from Palumbo. You know, they brought it back on a flatbed. What? They had to deliver all the posts and stuff. Oh. Me still working on my barn. So we just got it all in one thing and they had to bring a skid steer that came off the back and they picked it up and they, you know, and the guy, the guy, Bob called me and was like, Hey, you know, wood's coming at 10. I'm like, I'm here. It's cool. So I met the guy out on the driveway and he was this guy and he started walking up to me. He's like, Hey, what's going on? And he didn't have a mask. I was like, dude, mask. He's like, Oh, <laughs> he put it on. He's like, where do you want it? And I'm like, follow me. And he drove the truck back. And then we were walking down the barn. He's like, I just said, put it right there in front of the barn and then I'll deal with it. He's like, oh, okay. He's like, so uh, is it true the actor lives here? I'm like, what actor? And he's like, the guy from, and this is crazy because he's like this big burly guy. He's like, the guy from uh, Diary of <laughs> Diary a Wimpy Kid, the dad. I was like, yeah, he lives here. He's like, all the time? I'm like, yeah, when he's, when he, but when he's not, he's not here. He's like, oh. Just right there. I'm like, yeah. He just thought I worked there. I he, everybody thinks I work here. <laughs> even without a mask, dude. Even without a mask, I've had that. Why? Why do people think what that? Do? Hey, what's this guy do here? 
was like, I don't know. I think he's a brain surgeon. Really? <laughs> Makes good money. This place is sweet. <laughs> I mean, I'll have conversations with people like that. Is he cool? Yeah, he's cool. That's priceless, actually. It's like awesome. Who gets the chance That's to why I love the masks? There's no more, like, you know. It's like who gets that opportunity? The fact that it happens over and over, that's classic. Yeah. So if you actually do have a conversation with someone who's like, where are you going? You're like, on okay, Thursday I have to fly to Hawaii because I have to work for one day. What? What do you mean one day? What do you do? I'm an actor. Full time? Yes. <laughs> Like I've had this conversation the other day. I was trying, I was like, yes, I'm an actor. Just go with me here. Then I have to fly to Toronto. So I need to get a COVID test. I'm trying to figure out, wait a second, what are you doing in Toronto? I'm doing a movie. Okay, so let's go back to the COVID test and I need to find out something. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's it's like it's fun around here. Just that's all. That's all funny. I would figure that everybody who lives near you would already know. No, why would they all know? I mean, some I people do, but. I don't know. I guess they wouldn't know, but that is so funny. We talked about Cowboys. We talked about Uncle Frank. Cowboys, um, that's coming up the 12th, February. Uh, Uncle Frank's out. You can watch that. White Lotus, which will come out in um, summer. Then I'm going to do 8-Bit Christmas really good it's so wait what's 8-bit christmas movie called 8-bit christmas and it's we're gonna that's what's it's a new line movie they're doing up in toronto so good it's it's 1986 it's like it's awesome it's just about a kid that that wants a nintendo so bad and it's it's in it's in 86 and i played a dad and it's it was really funny it's really good okay was, so that'll be a couple of years probably before it's out though right well, next Christmas, right? Oh, next Christmas. This Christmas? Oh, okay, 2021. 20, yeah, yeah, probably, right? Is that 8-Bit Warrior or something? Is that that series? No. No, no, no. It's oh, movie. okay. It's okay. really good. It's really funny. But it just, it just brings back all the old, like, I don't know how old you are, but that, that 86 is like when I graduated from high school. But I was like, I'm like, oh, my God, all the references. It's so great. Uh, hello, I have something for you then. Cobra what? Kai? Cobra Kai? Yeah. Uh, have you watched that? Uh, yeah. Have you? Hello. Oh. Okay. Let me just tell you if you. It's good. I, I graduated in 90, but I'm going to, so I, I have all the eighties things myself. It is okay. It's not really good, but it's also excellent. And I'm going to tell okay, you I'm why. Good. All right. It is not quality television, except it will give you so much joy especially the first season when you see the character, these are the characters who are grown up now. So you have um, Daniel from the Karate Kid and right. you have uh, Johnny from the Karate Kid and they're grown up now and they have kids and it is so entertaining. You, what? It's a great idea. They pull it off so in such a great way. You will have such joy. You will emanate joy from the 80s-ness and it is so funny yeah, I'll, I'll watch it yeah it's the humor like the 80s references and the humor like the f johnny the lines he has trust me okay. i don't want to oversell it but it is it will be joy for you to watch and you can they're all on netflix now yeah, i watched it in my two-week quarantine exactly exactly so do that i'm going to i'll look up that farm in that town and i'll give it to you oh yeah yeah please do that if you liked this talk with Steve, you've got to watch our talk from two years ago at the Brooklyn Film Festival. It is a classic. It's a short one. I put a link right up here and you can watch it right now. Don't forget to subscribe for more real talks with your favorite celebrities and uh, comment below. Drop a comment about why you love Steve Zahn. What do you love about him? Give me specifics, details, and I do read the comments. So I will share my thoughts on Steve with you too. Thanks for watching.